<clears throat> so we'll be continuing our discussion on uh, regression, both simple and multiple. Last time we did simple regression where we where we modeled or we, where we described age, early wage based on uh, on education. So I hope you have already you, you have already uh, loaded the packages, okay, and you have already imported the wage file and also modeled modeled our created our model one guys which is the linear model for the dependent variable early wage regressed on education okay and then we looked at the results of this and we said that uh, the summary function will give us from the stats package will give us this uh, result. So first, we looked at the overall goodness of fit test, di ba? Sabi natin ito yung nasa ilalim, where we have the F statistic at 103.4. Uh, there are two degrees of freedom here. First degree, degree of freedom one is the number of regressors, which is just one education, and degree of freedom two which is equal to n minus k minus 1, where n is the number of respondents, which is 526, minus k, which is the number of predictors, which is 1, and then minus 1 again to accommodate for the computation of your intercept. So that's degree of freedom to 524. The p-value is uh, practically 0. So we said that there's a null, there's a, this is an inferential test. The null hypothesis here is that Beta null is equal to beta 1 is equal to 0. So we're saying here that there are no uh, predictors that can be used for this, uh, for this model. Okay? And our conclusion is that we reject the null hypothesis that beta null is equal to beta 0. Uh, beta HO is beta null is equal to beta 1 is equal to 0. So there's strong statistical reason to believe that at least one of these uh, one of these uh, parameters is, is not equal to zero. Okay, so uh, we went to the individual test. Okay, tas nakita natin individual t-test, no? Ito yung intercept natin at saka education. And we see that education is statistically significant, no? Ang null hypothesis for this is H null is B1 is equal to 0. B1 refers to education. B0 refers to intercept. So, ito statistically significant. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin nun? We reject the null hypothesis that B1 is equal to 0. Okay? There's strong statistical reason to believe that B1, which is education, is not, uh, is a value other than 0. And the estimate is it's 0.54136. So, anong ibig sabihin itong 0.54136. Okay, what's the interpretation of this? It means that for every one year increase in education, there's a corresponding 0.54 or 54 cents or 0.54 dollars increase in hourly wage. Okay, in hourly wage. Okay, I hope you got that. Uh, clear ba yun, guys? Pause muna ako. No? Clear ba yung sinabi ko or would you want me to repeat that? Clear ba siya? Okay, isulat ko dito ah. For every one year no? increase in education, there is a corresponding 0 0.54 dollars. Dollars kasi ito, no? Lagi ko nalang dollars dito. Increase in hourly wage. And then put here, Kateris Okay, so let me copy this and put it in the chat box.
<clears throat> okay? So for every one year increase in education, there's a corresponding $0.54 increase in hourly wage, Keteris Paribus. I'll explain what Keteris Paribus means. No? Ibig sabihin ng Keteris Paribus, all things being the same. Ibig sabihin, if there are other variables, uh, we will not let them increase or change. So ang, ang pinapalitan lang natin, ang pinapa-increase lang natin si education. Okay, so we also looked at yung uh, R squared natin, no? yung coefficient of determination. Sabi natin, uh, this is used in evaluating the, the capability of the model to explain your dependent variable. Yes, thank you, Paul. Keteris paribus, ibig sabihin, all other variables are held constant. Ibig sabihin, hindi, ano, hindi, hindi pinapa-increase, no? hindi, pinapa hindi binabago yung, hindi pinapa-increase ng one unit yung other variables. All right, so, uh, back here, sabi natin, the, the independent variable is able to explain 16.48% of the variability of your dependent variable. So we have two types, R squared and adjusted R squared. No? Adjusted R squared will become really relevant when we deal with multiple regression. Kasi sabi natin, pag increase tayo ng increase ng, ano, ng, ng regressors, ng independent variables, tataas ng tataas itong, ano, itong multiple R squared. No? However, by having, ano, by having so many uh, variables, independent variables, then what happens is that the degree of freedom is reduced. Okay? Tapos, we are penalized by the adjusted R squared. Possible na liliit itong adjusted R squared. So generally, the adjusted R squared is always lower than your, than your R squared. Okay? Alright, so let's uh, continue. Okay, so, dinefine natin yung model natin. Okay, itong, itong model na to, okay, notice na walang, walang hat yung, yung HR wage dito, kaya meron tayong epsilon sub i, no? error term. Ito naman guys, linagyan natin ng, ng, ano to, ng hat. Ibig sabihin, predicted na to. When you say predicted guys, pinalitan natin yung education ng a particular value. Okay, we replace it with a particular value. So, pag replace natin to education, kunyari 11 years, magkakaroon tayo ng exact value. And that's what we call the predicted value. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, again, guys, uh, may I request that when you're commenting, e for everybody, ha, para mabasa din ang iba para ma-share niyo yung ano yung mga yung mga comments niyo. Okay? Thank you Paul for that comment. Sabi ni Paul dito. Okay, let, so let me just uh, copy this. Okay, so there was a comment here. Adjusted R square is a measure that penalizes the adding of irrelevant predictors or independent variables. Tama 'yon. No? Okay? So kasi kung gagamitin nating basis yung R squared there might be a tendency there there must be this there might be this false notion na sige lagay lang tayo ng lagay ng ano ng independent variable no, ng predictor kasi pag dagdag tayo ng dagdag ng predictor tataas ang tataas yung r squared natin okay that's not the point guys although we use r squared as a measure but it doesn't mean that dagdag ka lang ng dagdag ng ng independent variable kahit na wala namang theoretical na ano no, na, na theoretical underpinning na importante yung independent variable na yun in order to describe your dependent variable. There has to be rhyme or reason why you're using a particular variable as a predictor of a, of a response or outcome variable or an, a dependent variable. Okay? So I hope that's clear, guys. Now, ito, pinapakita ko lang, guys, yung difference, no? Uh, ito, this is the gen general equation. Naglalagay tayo ng error term. Ibig sabihin yan, guys, there's a difference between your hourly wage. Uh, yung predicted natin, guys, hindi siya magiging equal dun sa, sa actual value ng, ano, ng hourly wage. Okay? So, ito, linalagyan natin ng hat. Ibig sabihin, ito yung predicted. Yung predicted value is an exact value. So, there's no need to put here an epsilon sub i where the epsilon is your error term. Okay. 
So, kinumpute natin guys, we looked at uh, three measures as sum of the squares total, sum of the squares, uh, this is your errors, and sum of the squares of your regression. Yung ibang references guys, uh, SSE nila is sum of the squares explained, no? Explained. So, yung iba, SSE nila, that's the sum of the squares of your regression. So, just uh, be aware, guys, kung, anong, kung ano ibig sabihin ng SSE o SSR ng, kunyari, text or textbook na binabasa nyo. Uh, what's important here is the uh, computation, kung paano kinocompute. And then, the relationship, guys, that SST, sum of the squares total, is equal to your sum of the squares residuals, uh, regression pala, plus sum of the squares of your error terms. And sabi natin, yung R squared natin was derived from ilan yung variation na kayang explain ng model divided by yung total variation ng, ng model natin. Na total variation ng dependent variable natin. So this is the total variation. Tapos ito yung variation na kayang i-explain ng model natin. So this is what we call the... Uh, uh, R squared, coefficient of determination. Okay. So, sabi natin yung model 1 natin, uh, in regression, guys, sa regression, yung mod 1 natin na object, maraming laman yan, di ba? So, if we click this uh, mod 1, ayan, no? It's a list, actually. It's a list. So, may mga coefficient dyan. Okay, yung coefficient dyan, yung, ito yung intercept at saka ito yung ano, yung, yung coefficient ng education. So, may mga residuals, okay, fitted values, okay, etc. So, yung mod 1, na, which was generated by using LM, the LM function, it has, it, it's a list. It, it contains several items. So, Pwede din natin computein yung confidence interval ng module, model 1. Okay. So, ito, sabi natin si intercept, uh, we are 95% confident that it lies between negative 2.25 at saka 0 0.44. Notice that dito, in between this, tatamaan yung 0. 0 lies between negative 2.25 and 0.44. Kaya nga, there's a possibility that the intercept could be 0. Kaya nga, we are, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that B sub 0, your intercept is equal to 0. Okay, on the other hand, education, tingnan nyo yung, ano, yung, yung confidence interval natin dito. <clears throat> okay, so it lies between 0.44 and 0.64. <clears throat> and notice that hindi tatamaan yung 0 in between these values. So we are <clears throat> confident that your education, your, the education coefficient value will not be equal to 0. The probability that education coefficient is equal to zero is very, very minimal. No? Practically impossible. Kaya nga, sabi natin, pwede natin gamitin si education as a predictor of, of early wage. In fact, yung value niya, di ba, 0. 0.50, 0. 0.54 ba? 0. 0.54. <clears throat> Where is that? Yan. 0. 0.54. And then, ang, anong ibig sabihin itong 0. 0.54 na to, guys? For every one year increase in education, there's a corresponding $0.54 increase in hourly wage. Pag bumaba naman ng $0.54 si uh, one, year, uh, one year decrease in education, bababa si hourly wage ng $0.54. Okay, so uh, let's now go here, guys. <clears throat> so... I think we ended here. Okay, we use the broom package to <clears throat> augment no? model, model 1. Tapos we created this object, mod 1, that diagnost, diagnostic, that metrics. So if we run that, sabi natin, mag, nagkaroon tayo ng isang object na andi dito guys yung, yung mga uh, regression ano natin, values. No? Andi dito si early wage, education, ito yung dependent variable, independent variable, Predicted value, okay? Residual. Paano na nakuha yung residual? Actual value, 3.10 minus predicted value, 5.05. Saan nakuha yung predicted value? Based on the model, guys. Yung negative 9 plus 
negative 0.9 plus 0.54 times education. No? That's where we get the predicted value or the fit, pre, uh, fitted value. Uh, itong standard residual, you just you just uh, convert this uh, value into a normalized value, a standard value. And alam nyo naman ito, ano yung, if you recall guys, yung formula ng standardizing a value is Z, di ba? Is equal to X minus mean over sigma. So yun, that's how you got this. No? That's how you got this. <clears throat> so, sige, subukan lang natin ha, just to show you. So let me copy this. Control C, Control V. So this is your uh, X value. Okay. X minus mean. Mean of what? Mean of this. No? Mean ng... So this is from... Uh, your okay that's from your mod one dot diag dot matrix dollar dollar dot fitted no okay so ang ginawa ko guys yung x value uh, ito yung residual na to kasi iko convert natin into standardized residual no? this Minus the mean of this, mean of mean of the residual, no? then uh, close na din to, then divided by, ano formula guys? Divided by the standard deviation ng ito din. No? Okay, so this is uh, this value residual minus the mean of the of the uh, undefeated sorry mean of the residual dapat so mali ito no? mean ng dot mean ng residual. Okay. Explain ko lang ulit guys ha. Kinonvert natin to into itong point negative 1.95 kinonvert natin to into a standardized value. So how do you compute for the standardized value? This minus the average of residual divided by the standard deviation of residual from your basic stat. No? So let's run this. Okay, negative 0.577 yun. Do na kuha yung guys. No? Do na kuha. Okay. So itong Cook's distance naman, sabi natin na ginagamit to, okay, we use this in order to determine if a certain observation is influential. Ano ibig sabihin ng influential? Influential, okay, influential. Ibig sabihin nun guys, if this particular observation, yung itong row na to, yung first row, pag tinanggal yan dito sa wage natin, Asan yung wage natin? Okay, if you remove this first observation, ito, okay, it will greatly change. Mababago yung, ano, yung output natin. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng influential data point. No? Okay, so let's uh, close ko muna to. Let's move on, guys. Let's continue. Okay, clear ba yung explanation ko kanina ng, ng table kanina? Okay, chat nga please kung clear, kung my questions. Okay, thank you. Good. Salamat, ha? Okay, let's now go to... Okay, thank you for your feedback, guys. Okay. Let's now go to... Uh, Mag-module 2 na tayo. Ah, ito. No? Okay, I don't think I discussed this with you. Now, after you model, hindi pa pwedeng yun na yun, no? We have to analyze. Di ba may mga assumptions yung linear regression? Kailangan i-analyze natin. So this is one way. Uh, ito yung isang function. Nun. Ito yung isang code. So if you click this, okay, lalabas ito, four plots. Actually, lima yan. Ano? Limang plots ng residuals versus fitted, 
scale location, which is ang pinaplat naman dito yung standardized residuals, yung nakita natin kanina, over defeated values. Ang kaibahan lang nitong number one at saka number two na to, uh, dito yung y-axis yung residuals mismo, dito man yung standardized residuals. Yung kinonvert natin yung x minus min over sigma. No? Tapos ito naman, normal QQ plot, this is used to test kung uh, kung normally distributed yung residuals natin. Okay? So dapat, andi dito yan, dapat nasa line na to. No? Yung dotted line na yan. Looks like meron tayong problem sa normality kasi tingnan nyo itong points dito. No? Yung mga points na nasa uh, uh, rightmost. No? Medyo may problema tayo sa normality. Okay? And then dito din, okay? we look at this uh, sa Cook's distance. Na mukhang may mga points na influential. Okay, so let's leave that for a while. Okay, there's a discussion of this. No, yung pinos ko na ano na pinos ko guys na RMD file. Okay, uh, as part of your assignment, guys, look go through this. Kasi kaya nyo nang kaya nyo na yung mga ano guys. Uh, you can on your own uh, look at this uh, look at this model and uh, look at the diagnostics no ng isang linear model. Okay, pero we'll go through that also very quickly. All right. So, another way to go about it, guys, is this one. No? Using GG45, i-autoplot natin. Pag rinan natin to, okay, mas, mas pareho lang sa taas, no? it's the same. Uh, the only difference is that mas clear yung ano dito, ano? mas clear yung, yung plots niya compared to the, to the one above. So, uh, ito. So for me, I prefer using this, yung autoplot, no? from GG45. All right. So uh, I leave you guys to read this. Uh, ano naman to, yung self-explanatory. Uh, yung kanina, apat na plots, ito, mod 1 and then 1. Ibig sabihin, yung first plot lang yan. Kasi ap limang plots actually to apat lang yung naka nakikita. So if we plot mod 1 and then 1, it will give us this one. Yung unang plot. So let's run this. Yun. Okay. So we said that when we model, uh, when we do linear reg uh, linear regression, <clears throat> we don't stop at coming up with the output. Kailangan i-test natin yung mga assumptions. <clears throat> so for example, dapat yung residuals, okay, dapat constant siya. It looks like here guys na Tinan nyo, uh, may fanning out yung residuals natin. Ano ibig sabihin fanning out? Tinan nyo, parang ano, parang fan no? na lumalaki over time. It seems to be increasing over time yung variance niya. Okay, dapat malapit lang siya. Kung constant lang yan guys, dapat yung red line na to, it will be very close to this dotted line here. Tapos, uh, yung variance natin dapat should not be uh, increasing over time. Ito kasi, tinan nyo, Lumalaki over time. And then there are some points here that that I uh, identify as possible outliers. No? Okay. So, ito, naglagay ako ng notes dito, guys. This is used to check the linear relationship assumptions. A horizontal line without distinct patterns is an indication for a linear relationship, which is good. So, dapat kasi linear yung relationship ni, ni, ano natin, ni early wage at saka education. From this one, guys, it doesn't look as if it's linear. So possibly, baka may ibang model na mas maganda aside from a linear regression model. Baka quadratic dapat. No? But it just tells us that there seems to be a problem if we're going to use a simple linear regression model. Okay, How about this? Second land. Second naman, this is used to test. Okay, nasobrahan to. Pag-quarto ko yata, pakitanggal na lang guys. Normal QQ used to examine whether the residuals are normally distributed. Again, guys, napakita na natin to. Okay. Dito sa, sa leftmost at saka sa rightmost, may problema tayo. No? This is indicative of non-normality of, of our model. Okay. Third, guys. Third. Ito naman, plot mod 1, number 3. This is used to test your scale location. It's used to test the constancy of variance. Yung homoscedasticity. Sabi natin na 
Okay? Sabi natin, guys, na kapag hindi hindi line yan, hindi horizontal line, okay, parang pareho lang to guys, kanina ng ano, ano yung model number, uh, plot number one natin. Here you see a smooth line here. And nakita natin na hindi, hindi siya straight line, hindi siya horizontal. Ibig sabihin ng ganitong line na hindi, na hindi, per, hindi uh, almost hindi line siya, uh, uh, it means that our variance is not constant. So pag hindi constant yung variance ng residuals natin, ibig sabihin heteroskedastic yung error terms natin. Okay, and there are ways to address that. Okay, unfortunately guys, for this subject, hindi na natin aabutin yung how to address these issues. Uh, I did discussion in the next subject, nyo, which is Finstar. Okay, next is. Okay, di, ganun din dito, guys. Residuals versus leverage. It's used to identify influential cases. Okay, sabi natin pag influential cases, guys, uh, extreme values to, nakapag tanggali natin yung value na to, it could affect the results no? ng model natin. So, dito sa plot, notice plot number 5 to, no? Notice na may mga may mga uh, possible points ng influen uh, na influential to. So, uh, uh, observation 112, observation 59, and observation 379. Also, guys, ito yung sa Cook's distance, which is not shown in the four plots. Okay, ito. So, this measures Cook's distance. Uh, we will not go into the Mathematical computation of Cook's distance. However, <clears throat> consistent no one one two fifty nine three seventy nine. So, ang ibig sabihin to guys, kailangan tignan yung points na yon, yung observations yon. It's possible na baka nagamali siya, no? Possible, possible ba nagamali yung ano? Was there an error? Kung wala na mga error, kung ganon talaga yon, hindi natin pwedeng basa basa tatanggalin yon, no? It might mean that uh, you have to address this. Kasi na-address naman guys yung heteroskedasticity by some by some uh, models, no? Or maybe uh, we can use another model instead of a linear regression model. So yun lang yung mga implications nun. Okay, now let's go to uh, multiple regression. Karina, simple regression lang yan. Back my question. For the Cook's distance, uh, okay. Ito lang siya. Yung sa... Pag plot ng Cook's distance, ito lang. Plot, model 1. It's the fourth plot. No? Okay. Sorry, hindi ko yata nalagay ito sa inyo. No? I'm sorry. Paki, pakisulat na lang, guys. Ha? Paki-insert na lang. Kasi yung unang plot natin, di, di ba lima siya? Lima, no? Aapat lang, no? So, hindi siya pina, hindi pinapakita yung number 4. Okay. So, you can access that by plotting individually. No? So dito ang ginawa natin, inisa-isa natin para ma-analyze natin isa-isa. Tapos dito, it seems to indicate that there are three influential points. No? Okay? So ang mga outliers, guys, are not necessarily influential. Pwede kang maging outlier pero hindi siya influential. But necessarily, all influential points are outliers. Okay? So I hope that's clear. No? Not all outliers are influential. But all influential data points are outliers. Si outlier, uh, by definition, uh, it, it goes outside a certain range of value. No? <clears throat> Na-discuss natin dati yung two key. Na-discuss nga natin, di ba, di ba yung box plot? Na lumalabas siya dun sa uh, one point, uh, sa Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Di ba? Lumalabas siya dun. So pag lumabas dun, outlier yon. Pero it doesn't necessarily mean na influential siya. There's a different way to, to compute yung influential data points and you use the Cook's distance formula. Okay? So the, the formula is quite complex for us. Hindi na natin kailangan alamin yung formula na yun. Suffice it to say, guys, that be aware na itong Cook's distance na to, particularly 112, huh? siya yung pinakamataas na Cook's distance. No? That, that's a greater than 0.1. So the higher the Cook's distance, the more we can say that that's an influential data point. All right. So, any more questions? Okay. So, itong wage natin, guys, meron tayong categorical variables. No? White, female, single, race, gender, civil status. Okay. Sa so R, it's very easy to deal with this. In fact, hindi na natin, basta gawin lang natin, i-indicate lang natin sa R na factor siya. 
So bahala na si R gaga ang maga magaano doon, no? So here, as factor, as factor, as factor, we, we're converting race, gender, civil status, not as uh, from character to factor. So when we run this, guys, we can see now that the structure, factor na si race, factor na si gender, factor na si civil status. And then we can now proceed with the uh, multiple regression natin. Okay. So again, guys, ito, uh, same lang to kahap nung Monday. Yung, you can either use the psych, yung pairs that panels niya, or you can use the performance analytics. Run na lang natin to. Uh, one by one na lang. Para makita natin yung correlation. Okay, just by way of review. So dun sa psych package ng pairs that panel, sinasama pa rin niya yung, ano, yung, yung categorical variable. No? <clears throat> Race, gender, civil status. Although nakikita naman natin na halos uh, ang correlation ni race, for example, with early wage is very small. No? Kasi hindi naman talaga to quality, quantitative variable. Okay, ganun din si gender, although si gender, 0.34 siya. No? Tapos si uh, civil status, negative 0.23. So parang may fluke dito kay gender, no? kasi 0.34. 1 and 0 lang kasi yan. No? Okay. But that doesn't mean anything na si gender ay highly correlated with early wage, particularly because si gender is only a factor. Pinalitan lang siya ng 1 or 0 ni, ano, ni, ni, uh, ni R and then we can't really uh, interpret that. No? Okay. So ang ano lang talaga guys, ang may correlation lang talaga are quantitative variables. Okay, this one, the other one, guys, uh, uh, kinuha na natin to last time. Saan yun? Ito. Ito, no? Yung performance analytics. Yan. Okay, so I'll not explain this anymore since we have explained this already last time. Okay, now let's, let's create our model now. Okay, so mod 2, this, this is now our second model, LM ulit, early wage, tilde, education, experience, tenure, race, gender, civil status, number of dependent. Okay, and then data is equal to wage. So we're now using all the variables. No? Ginagamit na natin na lahat ng variables natin in order to explain early wage. A shortcut for this is this, LM, early wage, tilde, then dot. Ibig sabihin ng dot, guys, lahat ng variable na makikita natin dito sa wage. Okay? Clear yan, guys? Pause muna ako. Clear? Okay. Thank you. All right. So, let's run this. No? Let's run either one of them. And then, kunin natin summary. Tapos, kunin natin si Akaiki at saka si BIC. Take note, guys, si Akaiki information criterion at saka Bayesian information criterion we use that in order to compare models. Ang general rule dyan, the lower the AIC, the lower the BIC, the better the model is. Okay, so i-compare natin na. So i-run natin to. Okay. And then yung summary. No? <clears throat> if we run this, yung una, guys, as linagin natin open and close parenthesis, ibibigay lang sa atin yan yung coefficients. Okay. Coefficients lang ibinigay sa atin dito. So this is the co coefficient for the intercept, and for the other seven regressors. No? Okay. A better output is the summary kasi ito na yung complete. Yan. Okay. So let's quickly analyze this, guys. Analyze natin to. Okay. So <clears throat> ito yung output natin. Ano? Sabi, ang formula natin, early wage, is a regress on all the independent variables from data is equal to wage. Here you have a measure of your residuals. And then let's take a look first at the overall goodness of fit. So what's our inference on the overall goodness of fit? Which is, ano yung, ano nun? Ano guys yung, ano yung, uh, what's the uh, null hypothesis for the overall goodness of fit? Null hypothesis natin is B null is equal to B1 is equal to B2 is equal to dot, dot, dot. Is equal to B7, ba? Is equal to 0. Kasi 7 yung independent variables natin. 
B null is your intercept. Tapos pito yung independent variables natin is equal to zero. So what's our inference? P value is less than 0 0.05. Diba? So ang conclusion natin, reject the null hypothesis that beta null is equal to beta 1 is equal to dot 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 B7 is equal to zero. No? Reject natin yan. Okay? There's a, there's a statistical reason to believe that at least one of this no, is not equal to zero. Hindi natin sinasabi na lahat not equal to zero. Ang sinasabi natin, at least one of this is not equal to zero. Kasi guys, ano ba yung implication pag yung mga parameters natin is equal to zero? Pag equal to zero yan, ang ibig sabihin niyan, hindi natin siya pwedeng ma-model si, si early wage kasi yung slope ng, in, ng uh, variable na yan, if it's zero, then ibig sabihin nun, hindi natin, siya, hindi natin may explain si early wage. E yun nga ang gusto natin na may explain si early wage. Okay? So, tingnan natin to Ang F stat natin, 43.54. Ano yung 7, guys? This is degree of freedom 1. Ano yung degree of freedom 1? The number of parameters. The number of uh, regressors. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Diba 7 lahat yan? Kaya 7 yung degree of freedom 1 natin. Degree of freedom 2, 5, 1, 8. Saan ang galing yan? N minus K minus 1. N is 5, 526. K is 7 and 1. No? So 526 minus 7 minus 1. Okay, that gives us that gives us 518. That's your degree of freedom 2. Okay. Clear, guys? Kaya nga ito, 518 degrees of freedom. Okay, and then, the R squared is 0.37. Ano ibig sabihin nun? 37%. Ibig sabihin nun that the model can explain 37% of the variability of your dependent variable early wage. Kanina, 16% lang. Ngayon, 37% by virtue of adding more independent variables. And of course, sabi natin guys, ang ginagamit natin is the adjusted R squared. Notice guys, mas mababa si adjusted R squared kaysa kay R squared. Okay? Any questions so far guys? Dun sa overall goodness of fit natin? Overall goodness of fit test. Is that clear? Clear ba siya? Pakichat nga guys. Any clarification? Okay. Thank you. The rest, please. Paki comment naman. I'd like to know if... Uh, uh, my questions kayo or, or clear siya? Okay. Adjusted R squared 30, 38% ba? Uh, 36, no? 36.19. Ibig sabihin ng adjusted R squared or R squared for that matter, pareho lang naman sila ng interpretation, is that 36 or 36% of the variability of your dependent variable hourly wage can be explained by your uh, independent variables by your regressor, regressors, by your model. Okay? Remember kanina yung simple regression natin, simple linear regression, 16% lang yung R squared natin. So 16% lang yung kayang i-explain ng model natin on the uh, variability ng dependent variable natin. Ngayon, tumaas siya, no? naging 36. As expected, guys. Expected natin to, Kasi naglagay tayo ng mas maraming independent variables. Sabi natin, pag nagdagdag tayo ng independent variables, lalaki yung R squared natin. Okay? Alright. Good. Now, punta na tayo sa individual test of significance. Individual test kasi by variable na siya. Okay? So apparently here, guys, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, there are four variables that are significant. Uh, uh, let's discount intercept. Huh? Tatlong variables, guys, ang significant to the 0 0.001 uh, level of significance. Meron namang isa, significant lang at 10% level. Kaya 0 0.072 eh. Okay? So let's, let's try to explain this. No? So what are the significant variables? Education. Although si experience at 10% lang, pero sige, isama natin, tenure and gender male. Now first, take a look at this. Ano ibig sabihin itong race white na to? Okay, let's try to interpret this first. Race white. Di ba ang pangalan ng variable natin? Race. Di ba? Hindi naman siya race white eh. Di ba? Race yung ano natin. Yung variable natin. Ang ginawa ni ano dito, ginawa ni 
ni R, sabi niya, raised white, ibig sabihin guys, yung variable na wala dito, uh, okay, so, raised white, ibig sabihin yung variable na wala dito guys, yun ang ginawa niyang benchmark. Okay? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I stand corrected. No? Si raised white guys, uh, wait ha. Raised white, ibig sabihin, okay, ang tinanggal niya si non-white. No? Okay? So, si white ang pinasok niya, si non-white ang hindi niya pinasok. Okay, ibig sabihin nun guys, uh, we are going to analyze this in relation to non-white. Ba't niya pinili si non-white, si white guys, as your reference? Okay, pinili niya si non-white kasi ang ginawa niya alphabetical. So, white and non-white, sinong unang, ano, sinong unang mag appear alphabetically? Si non-white. So what happened was, si non-white ginawa niyang zero, si white ang ginawa niyang one. Okay? In other words, guys, pinalitan niya to. Okay? Pinalitan niya to. Ginawa niya tong ano, ginawa niya tong one, 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 zero. Okay? Dito naman, si gender, uh, female will appear first. Therefore, zero si female, one si male. Kaya nga ang ginawa niya, gender, male. Ibig sabihin ng gender male, si male yung 1, si female yung 0. Okay, civil status naman ganun din. Married will come alphabetically first, no? Kasi letter M siya. So ginawa niya yung si married 0, si single 1. Okay? Kaya nga yung output natin, guys, if you take a look once again at our output. Okay, tinan nyo. Race white Gender male, civil status single. Yung mga alphabetically mauuna, sila yung, sila yung ginawa niyang zero. Okay? Okay, therefore, let's, how do we interpret this? Okay, how do we interpret this? Pag ininterpret na natin itong mga categorical variables, it will, uh, uh, ano, may, may ano, uh, it will always be referred to your benchmark. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, on the average, on the average, white people receive 0 0.10, 0 0.11 dollars more than their non-white counterparts. Okay, so isulat ko yun. On the average, white respondents receive 0 0.11 Dollars na natin, dollars, 0 point, point 11 dollars more than their non-white counterparts, Keteris Paribus. Okay, so that's how we, okay, control C, Uh, the average white respondents receive 0.11 dollars more than their non-white counterparts, no? In terms of hourly wage, no? Ito naman, guys. Ano, how do we interpret this 1.75? On the average, male workers, male laborers receive 1.76 dollars more than their female counterparts. Keteris paribus. Okay, yun ang interpretation yan, no? Okay, so this is interpreted uh, early wage pa rin, kaso in relation to the benchmark. Okay, how about this? On the average, single respondents receive $0.46 less, less to kasi negative, than their married counterparts, no? Keteris Paribus. Okay, guys? Clear so far? Okay, so let's go here to the other variables kasi dapat ini-interpret natin to, no? Ano ibig sabihin ng 0.57 na to? On the average, a white one-year increase. Bakit one year? Kasi year ang ang uh, uh, ang dimension ng ano ng education. A one-year increase in education will lead to a 0.57 dollars 
increase in hourly wage keteris paribus. Okay? How about experience? A one-year increase in experience will result to a $0.02 increase in hourly wage keteris paribus. How about tenure? A one-year year din to, no? A one-year increase in tenure will result to a $0.138 increase in hourly wage keteris paribus. Okay? How about number of dependents? A one-year, a one, a one unit, no? Number of children kasi to, no? A one, an increase in one child, okay, will lead, will lead to a $0.146 increase in hourly wage. Okay? So that's how we interpret this. Ano ibig sabihin ng negative 0.389? Ibig sabihin nito, guys, okay, ibig sabihin nito, this is the hourly wage, negative, negative 0.39, for a person who has, does not have any education, does not have any experience, does not have any tenure, okay, di ba? Tapos, who is non-white, female, married, and who has no dependents. Okay, ulitin ko yun ha. Tinan yung interpretation. Negative 3.39. Of course, guys, walang pragmatic na explanation yan kasi uh, negative hourly wage, hindi naman pa pwede yun, di ba? Pero, strictly speaking, pag i-interpret lang natin to, 3.39 is the hourly, negative 3.39 is the hourly wage of a person who is non-white, female, married, no dependents, no years of education, no years of experience, no, no years of tenure. Okay? Yung mga education, experience, tenure, okay yon, madali maintindihan. Zero, zero, zero. Number of dependents, zero. Pero bakit ko sinabing non-white, female, at saka married? Bakit ko sinabi yon? Kasi ang ibig sabihin, kapag zero to, pag zero yung race white, ibig sabihin nun, non-white siya. Kapag zero yung gender male, ibig sabihin, female siya. Pag civil status single, zero, ibig sabihin, married siya. Okay, get the point, guys? So, once more, guys, negative 3.39, which is the inter intercept, tells us this is the hourly, average hourly wage no? of a person who is female, kasi dapat zero to, who is, oh, sorry, non-white, kasi dapat zero to, female siya, married siya, tapos walang education, walang experience, walang tenure, walang... Uh, walang anak, walang number of dependents. Okay? So, pause muna ako. Clear yung, guys? Clear? Clear ba siya? Okay. Thank you. So, that's how you interpret, guys. Huh? That's how you, we interpret the, you know, the variables. Always remember the Keteris Paribus. At saka yung interpretation ng intercept. No, gagawin natin zero lahat ng mga Siro lahat ng mga independent variables natin. It just so happens here na may mga categorical variables. So dapat alam natin guys kung sino yung sinero out natin. Si R, ang ginagawa niya, paano niya sino yung sinisiro niya sa categorical variable? Hahanapin niya yung, yung sino? Hahanapin niya yung alphabetical, mag-unang appear alphabetically. Okay? Tama. Tama, no? Alphabetical order. So, paano guys kung yung, yung uh, variable natin, tatlo? Tatlong, ano? Kunyari, apat. Kunyari, apat guys. Kunyari, uh, year level. Kunyari, may year level tayo dito, no? So, Frosh, <clears throat> Sophomore, Senior, Junior. So, ang mangyayari dyan guys, si Frosh, yung gagawin niyang zero. Tapos, magkaka-result dito na year level, Sophomore, year level, Junior, Year level senior. <clears throat> okay, so dapat <clears throat> magkakaroon guys dito ng tatlong ano, tatlong result, no? Kung apat yung levels ng ng factors natin. Tapos all of them will be uh, interpreted <clears throat> as compared to Frosch level. Okay, clear ba yon guys? So ulitin ko yun na. May mga variables tayo na factors na more than two yung ano yung levels. Kunyari, year level, apat. Frosh, sophomore, junior, senior. 
Okay, so in that case, si R ang gagawin niya, si Frosch ang gagawin niyang zero kasi alphabetically siya mauuna. Tapos yung output natin dito, dito sa regression output natin, magkakaroon na year level soft, year level junior, year level senior. Okay, so tatlong magiging ano nun, tatlong magiging outputs dito. Tapos whatever the estimate is, you will always interpret it related to Frosch, freshman. No? Okay, clear yun guys? Pakitype nga kung clear siya. Kung clear yung explanation na yan. <clears throat> yung more than two yung ano. Pag two, madali lang eh. Kasi isa lang yung lalabas na ano. Isa lang yung lalabas sa outcome. Kasi yung isa gagawin natin zero, isa lang yung magiging one. Okay? Alright. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, however guys, hindi lahat to predictors kasi may iba sa kanila na hindi significant. Okay, so ibig sabihin, si number of dependents, hindi siya significant. Oh. Si civil status single, hindi siya significant. So race white, hindi significant. Ito, uh, significant lang at 10%. So assuming na ito yun yung model natin, assuming that's already our model, ano mangyayari? No? So ang mangyayari guys, itong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, itong lima lang guys ang lalabas sa equation natin. Hindi lalabas si race white, hindi lalabas si civil status single, hindi lalabas si number of dependents. Okay? Alright. So, what to do now? Meron tayong model 1 kanina, meron tayong model 2. So, sino mas maganda? Si model 1 o si model 2? Apparently, guys, based on R squared, mas maganda si model 2 kasi 36% ang kaya niya explain. Si model 1, 16% lang. Uh, however, guys, hindi lang natin tinitingnan yun. Ano? Okay, tingnan muna natin, before we do, ano, before we do ANOVA, okay, paki, paki sama nga dito guys yung ano. Sama nga natin dito AIC, AIC, model 1, comma, model 2. So let's compare natin guys yung uh, BIC. Uh, let's just insert this. AIC muna. Okay. AIC guys, sino mas maganda? Si Model 1 o si Model 2? Remember guys, si Model 1, siya yung, ano, ha, siya yung, yung simple lang, si education lang ginamit natin. Si Model 2, lahat, no? yung seven variables. So which is better guys based on AIC? Answer guys? Pakicheck nga. Correct. Model 2 is better by virtue of having the lower AIC. Based on BIC then, Bayesian information criterion, Mas maganda din si Model 2. So usually guys, si Model, si AIC at saka si BIC, parehong binibigay yan na result. No? So better si Model 2. Pero guys, we have to do some, okay, correct. No? Thank you, Jaylene. Thank you, Armand. Okay. However, guys, we cannot just base it on AIC or BIC. We have to do some statistical test. No? So itong statistical test natin, Okay, before, do, before we do this, pwede natin i-compare guys si model 1 and 2 using the stargaze, stargazer function. And it will give us a good table. No? Okay, so ito yung model 1 natin. Si education lang yung regressor natin. Significant siya. Si model 2. Okay. Uh, model 2, guys. Yung iba hindi significant, di ba? <coughs> <coughs> 0.577. Five seven five. This is your. Ano yung point zero five two guys. That's your. So what's point zero five two? Ito guys. Point zero five two. What's this? Ito sa linalabas na output niya, no? <clears throat> okay. That's your SE, no? Standard error. Point zero five two. Yan. So that's a stargazer result. Dito makikita natin R squared and adjusted R squared. Okay, so based on adjusted R squared, mas maganda si model number two kasi mas mataas yung adjusted R squared niya. Okay, and then yung F statistics natin and then degrees of freedom. All right. Uh, close ko na to. Okay, so uh, we have to do a statistical test, no? Ito. We have to do an analysis of variance. Okay, run natin to. Okay, so we have this 
analysis of variance. When we're comparing regression models, we need to run uh, an analysis of variance. Okay, so here we're comparing model one, yung simple linear regression natin, at model two, yung multiple linear regression natin. Now, ang tawag sa model one, guys, is the restricted model. Restricted kasi, konti lang yung predictor siya relative to model two. Si model one, isa lang yung predictor. Si model two, uh, <clears throat> pito yung predictors. So in this, comparing model one and model two, si model one, <coughs> ang, res ang restricted model natin, si model two, yung unrestricted. <clears throat> Now why is that important? Kasi, ang null hypothesis natin dito sa analysis of variance natin, the restricted model is preferred to the unrestricted model. So sinasabi dito, mas maganda daw si restricted kaysa kay <clears throat> unrestricted. Yes, oo. Uh -oh. uh, question dito ni Bianca. So, uh, Bianca, pwede ano, pwede paki <clears throat> uh, lagay to everybody yung <clears throat> good, that's a good question. <clears throat> paki copy na lang Ayan, okay. Thank you, Bianca. <clears throat> so, sabi ni Bianca, for comparing of models, ganun po palagi yung null hypothesis. Yes. Ang null hypothesis lagi, si restricted model is preferred or better than the unrestricted. Ano si restricted? You must counting independent variables. Kasi gusto natin malaman dito, by adding the indip more independent variables, nag-improve by model natin. Diba? Nag-improve by model natin pag magdadagdag tayo ng independent variables. <clears throat> Take note, guys, ang general rule is uh, yung, the lesser the number of dependent variables, the better. Kung mamamodel natin isang variable na mas konti lang yung regressors, mas maganda yon. Based on the principle of, <clears throat> tawag natin dyan, <clears throat> parsimony. No? Parsimony, or we want a model that's parsimonious. Parsimonious. Kung kaya natin i-explain na maganda yung isang variable using just two or three variables as compared to using 100 variables, syempre naman, guys, mas okay, mas okay yung tatlong variables lang. Unang-una, <clears throat> kung sa actual research, mas mura yun, no? Kasi imagine, mag-ano mag, mag, ka sa survey ka, 100 variables, paano mo, how in the world will you be able to accomplish that, do that? Mahal, guys. Napakamahal ng mag-research tayo na We're looking at several variables, 100, imagine, as compared to two or three. Eh kung kaya naman i-explain ng three variables lang, yung, yung variable na uh, we're trying to explain, as compared to 100 variables, di ba? Practical lang, guys, di ba? So that's why parsimony is very important sa, sa regression. The lesser the number of variables na kaya naman i-explain yung ano, the better. Okay. So ito guys, i-run natin. Rinan na natin si ANOVA. Ano lumalabas dito? So let's take a look at the p-value. Yan. So this is practically zero. No? <clears throat> so it's less than 0.05. Therefore, ano conclusion natin? Reject or fail to reject? Pakichat nga guys. Is it reject or fail to reject? Okay. Uh, John again, paki ano sa ano? Uh, Jan, paki, uh, Paul, paki, paki share na lang. That's a very good comment, no? So, Paul, could you kindly copy your... Yeah, thank you, Paul. No? So, sabi ni Paul dito, on a theoretical view, it is better to consider a research with lesser independent variables. Okay? Because its results could be more specific as well. Tama. Imagine, 100 variables, i-explain mo isa-isa yun. Diba? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck na lang sa ano. Uh, sa... <laughs> Pag-explain nun. Unlike kung aapat lang yan, eh, di ba, madaling i-explain. <clears throat> di ba? So, it, it really makes, parsimony really makes, makes sense, no? When we're doing regression. Here, guys, anong lumalabas? We reject the null hypothesis that the restricted model, that the more parsimonious model is better than the uh, unrestricted model. Dito, ang conclusion natin, mas maganda si ano, yung mas maraming variables. Okay, so that's our conclusion here, no? Okay, so clear yun, guys. Model 2 is better than Model 1 based on our ANOVA. Okay, kasi rin-reject natin yung null hypothesis na mas maganda daw si Model 1, yung restricted model natin. Okay, so we have to move on. Ah, we have to continue, guys, no? So mas maganda daw si Model 2. Kaso, guys, si Model 2 hindi lahat significant. 
So ang gagawin natin dito, we will conduct what we call a stepwise regression. Okay? Okay. Sulat ko dito. No? We will conduct a... Saan na tayo dito? No? So this is what we call a stepwise regression. Okay. It's what we call a backward. Bakit siya backward? Okay. Backward stepwise regression. Which guys... Uh, kung pwede guys, pakituloy-tuloy ito, no? Kasi hindi natin matatapos ito ngayon. Pero, uh, dun sa, ano natin, extra class, uh, we will have to finish this. Pero kung pwede guys, paki, ano, paki, paki run na rin kasi ito na yung stepwise regression, eh. No? <clears throat> stepwise regression na to, no? Okay, so, con continuing guys, sabi natin, magsi-stepwise regression tayo backward. Ano yung backward stepwise regression? Ibig sabihin nun, ilagay muna natin lahat ng mga variables natin, tapos isa-isa natin tatanggalin kung sino yung mga hindi significant. Okay, one at a time. Hindi natin pwedeng lahat tanggalin na sabay-sabay. Okay, so the backward stepwise regression calls for us looking at the insignificant variables. So ang candidates natin dyan, dalawa. No? Kung tutuusin kasama si experience kasi this is not significant at 0.05. <clears throat> Pero ang pipiliin natin, the lowest t-value, guys, t-value, yung lowest na uh, t-value, uh, absolute value, uh, absolute value. So if we take a look at this, 1.78, 1.58, 1.33. Ang pinakamaliit, 1.33. Okay? So that's, that will now be our living variable. Living, aalis. Aalisin natin. So number of dependents, 1.33. Siya yung living variable. Ano yung basis? T value, guys, pinakamaliit, absolute value. Disregard the negative sign. Okay, kasi baka tingnan nyo, ah, civil status single, ito yung uh, pinakamaliit kasi negative 1.58 siya. No, guys. Just look at the absolute value. So number of dependent being the smallest T value. Okay? Siyempre, guys, wala tayong pipiliin dun sa, ano, sa mga significant. No? Matataas yung T value niyan, absolute value. No? So ang mabababa na T value, yung mga insignificant. So number of dependents, ito yung candidate natin. Ito yung living variable natin. So mag-create tayo ng panibagong model natin. We'll call it model number four. Okay? Model number four na, what is the, li li what is the uh, ano? living variable? Number, num dip, dip, num dip, guys. Okay. Number of dependents, guys, ito na yung magiging ano natin. Magiging, uh, magiging ano na, yung living variable. Kaya nga kung titignan nyo guys, no? ano nangyari sa model natin? Okay, so I'll just uh, share this with you. Control C. Hindi ko yata sinare to para mas mabilis tayo. No? Uh, I think I left it blank for you to, ano, to write. Okay, so pakikopy na lang to guys yung code na to. Then ilagay nyo na kagad para mas makapag-save tayo on time. Okay. So ano nangyari guys? Education na lang, experience, tenure, gender, civil status. Oh, wait. Sorry. Bakit ganun? Dali, ha? Ah, tama. Pito lang pala, no? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ano pa natanggal dito? Dapat isa lang matatanggal. Sorry. So, sige. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, dapat kasama pa si civil status, no? Gender pala, kasama pa dapat. Sorry about this. Uh, the education, experience in your gender, civil status, and sino pa yung isa, guys? Sorry. Race. Oo, oh, sige. Tama. Race kasama, no? Plus race. Plus race. Pang ano ba si race? One, two, three. Hala, mali ako dito. Sorry. Sorry kaya pala. <laughs> Guys, sorry. Model 3 pa lang pala tayo, no? Model 3. Model 3. Ang ginawa natin sa Model 3, guys. Sorry, ah. Sorry. Ano ba tinitingnan ko kanina? Mukhang Model... Okay. So, dito, ang least significant is race, guys. No? 0.257 lang. So, we're, create, we're going to create another model. 0.25. Tatanggalin natin si race. Okay, so, ito, this is... This is now our model, no? Model 3 natin ngayon, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 na lang. No? Kanina 7. Tinagal na natin si raise. Okay. Or we can write it this way. Okay. Tilde dot lahat minus raise. Hindi kasama si raise. Okay. So if run this guys, run this, this two. We have this summary now. Okay. So ito na guys yung panibagong model natin. No? Model 3 na to. Notice that the adjusted R squared increased. No? 0.3602 kanina, ngayon 0.3631. Okay? <clears throat> And then you have here your F stat, still significant, overall goodness of fit, still significant. And then individual test natin, ano nangyari? Okay? May hindi pa rin tayong significant. And ang tatanggalin natin dito, ito na si number of dependents. No? But before we do that, guys, i-compare muna natin si Model 3 and Model 2. Okay. So let's see first, AIC na Model 2 at saka Model 3. Okay. Sino mas maganda, guys? Based on AIC and SBIC. Gawin <clears throat> natin ito pareho. Okay. Based on AIC, Model 3 is better. Based on BIC, Model 3 is also better. So, consistent sila, no? Okay, so Model 3 is better, guys. Kaso, again, we don't stop there, guys, kasi dapat mag-a-ANOVA tayo. Laging mag-a-ANOVA, no? Okay, Model 3 is better based on take-on, based on AIC. But based on ANOVA, guys, pakiran to, and this is what we have. Okay? So, si Model 1 natin dito, yung nauna, <coughs> model uh, model 1 natin dito sa output 1 2 3 4 na to no tapos ito 5 <coughs> okay sino si restricted model natin restricted model natin is model 3 di ba kasi binawasan natin si model 3 so that's the restricted model no Si model 2 natin, siya yung unrestricted. Okay, so what's our conclusion, guys? What's our conclusion? Ano yung conclusion natin? Ulitin ko, ah. Isulat ko lang dito, ano? What's our HO here? HO natin dito is model 3 which is the restricted. Alagyan natin ganito. Restricted model is better than model 2, which is your unrestricted. <clears throat> Bakit guys restricted si model 3? Kasi si model 3 yung binawasan natin ng race, di ba? Okay, so if we run this, yung ANOVA natin, ano lalabas? 0.7971, ano ibig sabihin nito? This is greater than 0.05. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that model 3 is better than model 2. Okay? Hindi natin mare-reject to. Ibig sabihin, mas maganda si model 3. Mas maganda yung binawasan natin ng binawasan natin ng ng race. No? Okay? So, what happens now, guys? What happens now? <clears throat> Ito si model 3 natin. Okay, again, stepwise tayo. Magtatanggal tayo dito. Sino yung tatanggalin natin? Pakichat, guys. Sino yung living variable natin? Bilis ng oras. Numdep, correct. Numdep ang tatanggalin, guys. Okay, thank you. So you're correct. That's numdep. So we come up with model number 4 now. So sa model number 4 natin, okay, take a look at this. Model number four. Okay, copy paste ko na lang to, so that hindi ko yata na purposely hindi ko yata lina gayan. Okay, so that's our model number four. And then, ano lalabas guys? Pagrinan natin si model number four. Model number four. So this is what happens, no? Okay. Yung, multi, yung R squared natin, 36.21, uh, parang bumaba siya yung adjusted R squared. But it's okay guys, kasi hindi lang naman si adjusted R squared ang titignan natin. No? Ang titignan na talaga natin yung 
statistical test si ANOVA. No? So here, iisa na lang yung hindi significant. No? Si civil status, naging significant siya at 10%. That, yung that na to. No? Okay, so mag ANOVA ulit tayo comparing. Okay. So comparing model 4, anong null hypothesis natin dito? Null hypothesis, model 4, which is the restricted, is better than model 3. No? So iran natin to. Okay, what do you have guys? Ano conclusion natin dito? 0.184. Greater than 0.05, okay, it's almost time. Reject the null hypothesis. No? <clears throat> Reject natin. So, ibig sabihin nun, mas maganda si model 4. Mas maganda yung mas, mas uh, konti yung, yung variables natin. And lastly, guys, sino tatanggalin natin dito? Si experience. No? So, si model number 5 ngayon, guys, si model number 5, ito na. No? Tinanggal natin si, si experience. So, let me just uh, okay, uh, saan yun? Num-depth num daw yung living variable. Saan siya? Saan ano? Num-depth saan? Sa mod okay, sa model 4, num-depth ang living variable. Kasi, okay, we're coming from model 3, di ba? Ito yung model 3 natin. Okay, when we when we um, did model 3, nakita natin na si NAMDEP siya yung pinakamaliit na t-value. Absolute value guys. Ha? Okay, in fact, titignan nyo lang guys yung mga insignificant. No? 1.78 to, 1.58, 1.33. Since NAMDEP has the least, lowest t-value, yun yung living variable natin. Okay, so I hope that answered uh, uh, the question. Okay. Okay, so it's already time guys. Anuhin ko lang to, ah. So, <clears throat> ang nangyari dito, no? model number 5. Take a look at model number 5 guys. <clears throat> Take a look at model number 5. Yeah. Significant na lahat. No? <clears throat> so, wala na tayong living variable. <clears throat> so, that na will now be our that will now be our uh, our uh, control C. Uh, tapos guys, I'm going to isi-send ko na lang tong file na to no, para ano para uh, yung uh, those of you who were not able to <coughs> run the code Okay so pinasok ko rin sa chat box guys yung result in <coughs> APA format So basahin niyo to guys this is how to <coughs> This is how to write your report in APA format. Okay, so again guys, after the final model, tingnan na guys yung mga, yung residuals. No? And then ito guys, yung last, yung stepwise regression, ito, yung ginawa natin na manual tayo, isa-isa natin, it can be run just in one step. No? Ito isang step to. So kindly uh, go through this guys, kung pwede, pakiran siya, tapos tingnan nyo, no? may mga notes naman ng konti dyan. Pakiran siya guys. No? So meron tayong dalawang klaseng stepwise. Meron tayong forward at saka backward regression. So next uh, Friday guys, uh, I'll be uh, conducting a, uh, uh, I'd like to invite you to come. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Friday uh, kasi may meeting kami ng 10 o'clock. So it will be at 8, 8 o'clock guys. Sorry maaga ha. Kasi sunod-sunod yung meeting namin, 8 to 10. No? In fact, I'm thinking of making it 7:30 para mas malaking makover. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking of two two and a half hours, no? Uh, so I hope you can come, guys, at 7:30. Attendance will not be checked. I'm going to record the proceeding. Okay, so paki ano, guys? <clears throat>